Breaking, FBI informant charged with lying about Joe Biden admits Russian intelligence was involved in passing a story about Hunter, special counsel says, uh-oh. Every conservative is gonna say all of this is fake news. Do you think there's a chance that we're like headed to civil war? <laughs> Uh, the lead Republican Hunter Biden whistleblower getting exposed as a lying Russian spy. Next time you talk to Rob Nor, bring it up. I'd be careful. He's not a Russian spy. He's a confidential informant, right? Don't use spy like Republicans use spy. Let's be precise with our terminology. He was a CI that seems like he was influenced by Russia. That's all we know so far. But also, keep in mind, just because that one CI might have been tainted doesn't necessarily mean every other claim is false. You would have to look at the other supporting evidence they found for that particular claim. Remember, don't fall into the bullshit traps of one thing was bad, so it's all bad. That's what the Republicans do, okay? Be better. The Ruizma Cope on Twitter right now is crazy. Yeah, like I said, there's, there's conservatives are never accepting that story, the idea that any of that was Russian anything. Because also keep in mind, this like legitimizes the whole initial FBI, what Pisco said yesterday, when the FBI was trying to say, hey, there might be Russian disinformation coming about the laptop story. Well, now it seems like those warnings might have been, uh, you know, substantiated to some extent, but. How wrong was the Burisma stuff? Um, I need to dig into it exactly, but it it sounds like, do you remember when we read that report about the confidential informant? There's a name for that form, like the T1028 or whatever. I don't remember the the, the, the number for the form, but basically, um, I think, that, was it the FBI agent that was involved in that investigation was getting false information from Russians or was it the, uh, was it the actual informant himself was passing on false information. I have to go and check. I don't think the informant himself would be in trouble, but uh, yeah, I don't know the exact details. I just know the, um, it was allegedly the informant knowingly lying. Was it, was it about the informant knowingly lying? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yikes. I could be wrong. Okay, I'm speaking with very low conviction because I, yeah, I just, I haven't looked, dug into all of this. So if somebody knows more than me, you know, you should believe them. But, um, my understanding is that a lot of the initial investigation, I believe, was built off of that confidential informant, right? Because I think we read that. I think we actually read the report from that confidential informant with Rob Noor, where the guy was saying like, oh yeah, like Biden gave us this money for this and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Joe said that he would talk to, you know, all these people and uh, I think we read that initial thing on stream. And, uh, this particular type of information is considered not the best because it's 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 not vetted, it's not corroborated, it's not verified. But I think a lot of uh, conservatives wanted to hang their hat on the statements from the CI. So funny how you and Pisco argued against conservatives about what it said and that it was a nothing burger, but are now conceding everything they said was correct, but not to be trusted. What? I don't think I ever argue that. You can go back and look at those streams. I'm pretty sure what I said at the time was that I think confidential informants are like just that the, the information is oftentimes unvetted and uncorroborated that's why you use multiple cis or you get information from a ci and then you corroborate it using other sources i'm pretty sure i said that at the time that that was the problem is that you're not sure if these confidential informants are telling because they're not like under oath i don't think they don't like um yeah you know, like a ci and they could just be wrong about things pretty sure that's what i said at the time you can go back and look at it isn't it a deposition do cis give depositions i'm not sure if a ci is under oath or not I'm not sure actually, where is, uh, I'd be curious to see what the legality is of information from a confidential informant. No, if a CI lies to the FBI, I'm pretty sure knowingly, what does that count as obstruction of justice? If a criminal charge, confidential informant, lying to FBI, because if, because if you, Make a false statement, especially if you are alleging to something. Yeah, you probably, that is probably a crime. Isn't that why it's a crime? Yeah, I think so. Why would a person be a confidential informant to then lie? That sounds like the dumbest shit you could do. Um, we could, I could think off the time I had like 50 million reasons why that might happen. Um, you might get charged with a crime and as part of your plea, you become a confidential informant, but you don't wanna rat on your friend, so you end up lying about it. Um, you might be a confidential informant if somebody pays you to lie. They find out that you're a CI and they pay you to pass on bad information. You might try to become a confidential, like you might have the goal of being a CI because you're already working for somebody else trying to pass bad. There's a million reasons why that could happen, right? I mean, it shouldn't, but, or it's bad obviously, but. Are you a confidential informant? <laughs> I can't answer that question. 
You should ask Nick Fuentes or Alex Jones that question, actually. They take training on how not to get used by CIs. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, if I started watching you at Destiny, I guess I'm more on the conservative side, but I highly disagree with the religious BS amongst other things. Am I a liberal? Last OG SC for the win. Listen, if you're a conservative and you disagree with things about conservatives, don't become a liberal. Just like <laughs> be part of the new conservative party. We need a we need a conserv we need a post Trump conservative party. Okay. Breaking, FBI informant charged with lying about Joe Biden admits Russian intelligence was involved in passing a story about Hunter, a special counsel says, uh-oh. That same day, Smirnov was arrested in the District of Nevada as he returned to the United States on an international flight. Smirnov was scheduled to leave the United States two days later on February 16, 2024 for a months long multi-country trip that by his own description involved meetings with officials of foreign intelligence agencies and governments. During his custodial interview on February 14th, Smirnov admitted that officials associated with Russian intelligence were involved in passing a story about business person who I assume is Hunter Biden. Oh no. Uh-oh. Every conservative is gonna say all of this is fake news. <laughs> However, but they will say that anything that the FBI or the special counsels have covered about Hunter Biden is real news, but this is all gonna be fake news for sure. Um, I have to read a lot, so I don't have too much time, but what's up? You wanna give me the play-by-play -play on this? Just real quick. Yeah. So in 2020, if you recall, Biden or Trump was pushing for the Department of Justice to go after Biden. Yep. And Rudy Giuliani was funneling information to Bill Barr. And Bill Barr, at the direction or really at the suggestion and because of the pressure of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. created a back channel through which information by Rudy Giuliani to target the Bidens was being funneled to the Department of Justice to vet it essentially. Okay. And we now know that this information related to the Which wait 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 wait, hold on. I just want to make it super clear that what you've said so far already is highly yeah. inappropriate. But go ahead. For, yes, for for the yep. president of the United States to be pressuring his own attorney general to politically prosecute mm -hmm. the Bidens after he tried doing that with um Zelensky. You guys mm -hmm. remember that why he yep. was impeached? Yeah. He tried it with the Ukrainians and then he's back on with his own Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. The same bullshit claims about Burisma are being funneled into the Department of Justice uh by Rudy Giuliani who has no business whatsoever doing this. Yeah. Um and we now know, right? Uh, b by the way, when this failed because it's all bullshit in October of 2020 in the lead up, uh Bill Barr calls on directly for Bill Barr to indict Joe Biden uh, less than a month from the election. And we now know that at least part of this information was Russian disinformation, specifically the part from the 1023 alleging a bribe from Burisma founder Zlochevsky to the Bidens. We now know that that was Russian disinformation from Russian assets funneled to the Department of Justice. And on that basis, MAGA congressmen, remember when they were trying to release the 1023 when the FBI says, no, please don't release it, please don't release it, please don't release it. When you're talking about it release the 1023, bullshit. is that the um, confidential informant stuff where they yes. were trying to show the Hunter Biden? I think we read that on stream, yeah. There ought to be an immediate, or I, they should let David Weiss finish his investigation, but the attorney general or the inspector general should announce an investigation into the start of this investigation and the political nature of it and what happened what was the timeline for why this investigation was started against the bidens what role rudy had it what role trump had it and what culpability if any Barr or other members of the department of justice had i think it's absolutely outrageous that for months maga congress people were touting this as evidence of, of biden corruption this russian disinformation that we now know had multiple contexts and if you read the contacts with, with Russian agents, it's shocking, the level of contacts. Um, and they're all gonna, I, I'm looking on Twitter for all these people talking about the Twitter files. Remember that? When they were saying it was bad for the intelligence agencies to warn people against fake stories from Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. Where are they now talking about this story? Well, I they're gonna say all of this is fake. This is so, I can print you the whole script for what they're gonna say. This is all fake news from the intelligence agencies that we already believe are compromised and blah, blah, that's gonna be the, yeah. But if it were true, if this is true, and Russian agents were involved in dissemination of this information, you know what that proves? That the intelligence agencies were absolutely right when they said, when they were trying to warn uh, social media officials and saying, hey, there might be something coming out about the Bidens. 
something fake related to Burisma in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They were absolutely right. And it was encouraged by the top, by the sitting president of the United States and his cronies. Well, true, but careful to- for timelines. Because um, Wait, fuck, am I mixing up elections? Hunter Biden story. Oh, no, wait, that was 2000, right? The laptop story, right? The laptop was... Right. Okay, I mean, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, it's all in the lead up to the 2020 election. Yeah, not the and he tried election. it before. He tried it with Ukraine. This is exactly the story they were trying to sell to Zelensky and the corrupt prosecutors, Lutsenko and others. It's absolutely evidence of corruption from Trump, and there should be an investigation into it. And I think it's outrageous and um, damning that these Twitter files, alt journalists, are completely silent now when this information comes out. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Real quick, just to be ultra clear, um, Trump himself was never the subject of any probe or indict, or I'm sorry, any um, like probe or investigation directly, was he? For Crossfire Hurricane, it was just people around him? Not until he fired Comey. After he fired Comey, was he the, was he the direct for subject? Obstruction. Of- yeah, gotcha. For obstruction. Yeah, for obstruction. Okay, just for obstruction. But before, before Comey actually told them he wasn't a target. Remember? Comey had said to Trump that he wasn't a he target wasn't, of the investigation. Yeah, sure, yeah, okay. But the reason why we know this is garbage is because these are the same disproven, debunked claims that made their way to the discourse about the Trump impeachment related to his call to Zelensky, the perfect call, which was a corrupt abuse of power for him to try to leverage his status as chief negotiator in the United States for a corrupt political motive, that is to affect the 2020 election and get these Ukrainian prosecutors to announce investigations into the Bidens. Mm-hmm. And that's what Rudy was fighting for in Ukraine. And that's why they fired, fired the Ukrainian ambassador. It's all there. It's all corrupt. And this guy, this guy will do it again. He's every, it's all projection. Everything about the political per, uh, prosecutions, no. That's what they want to do. That's what they tried to do. And that's what Trump did. Mm-hmm. Do you know who Burisma official one or two is in this, um, what is this, a charging document uh, or indictment? Or, so know. there's an indictment against Smirnov. I don't know. The, it's either Zlochevsky or, or some other um, Burisma official. I, I don't actually know off the top of my head gotcha. which one is one or two. Just reading through the, it's like 20 pages, I think. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, folks can't let this guy win he's corrupt as shit and he will abuse the department of justice and go after his political enemies as he's tried to do before and we need an investigation to see if this is what happened here i'm not saying that it necessarily was or you know the fbi can take an in information that's disinformation all the time and they can assess it whatever but if this was in any way pushed by rudy like he was pushing other false narratives there ought to be consequences for it and we the american people deserve to know yeah Goodbye. Love you. Be careful. Do you think there's a chance that we're like headed to civil war? Civil war. Uh, I feel like conservatives have. I think. I think it's happened, or I think it did happen sometime in the past one or two years, and I just didn't see the exact breaking point. I think conservatives have completely broken from reality, and I don't know what it looks like to have a system like system like you. Would you agree that law only works when everybody agrees to kind of play by it? Yes. Yeah, like it requires some good faith, cooperative engagement from a society for, for law to work. Um, like here's something that I, I hope I'm wrong on this. And if there's polling data or whatever, please, somebody email me to show me that conservatives are waking up on this. I, my guess would be that less than 5% of Trump people are even remotely considering changing any of their opinions on the Hunter Biden stuff with the information that's come mm-hmm. out about the confidential informant. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really depressing when you see actual tapes of Jim Jordan and James Comer saying, this is the crucial evidence. This is highly credible, very, very important in our investigation. Mm-hmm. And for that to just all come out as complete bullshit. And then to have them be like, it wasn't really that important. And we still have these other things that matter. It's also, can I draw a parallel? It's also crazy because this is a one-to-one repeat of the yeah. Iraq war, of having of somebody, war? yes, you have, a, you have an administrator that wants to manufacture a reason for war, and because his intelligence agencies aren't giving it to him, he takes unvetted intel, and he runs that right up to the top, and he uses that to make decisions. That's the equivalent of somebody in Congress taking statements from a confidential informant and pretending like that's rock-solid evidence while ignoring the determinations made by your intelligence bodies that are supposed to be corroborating, vetting, and then interpreting that information for you. It's the exact same playbook, but they're like totally blind 
point to it here where they're like people will, like Rob Norbert will read these these uh, forms. The T. I don't remember the the. Do you remember the abbreviation for the form? The T. What was F23? it called? Yeah, well, yeah, they'll be like That's reading these forms and be like, oh, 100%. They're treating this like this is a U.S. citizen under oath deposition in front of a jury giving a testament. It's like, bro, these are statements from a confidential format. If you don't corroborate this, you have no fucking idea. Like, it's the same playbook. And they're like, oh, okay, and this, uh, yeah. He, here's, here's, uh, let me, let me play real quick. Go. The counter. Yeah. The counter is this. Where were you, Stephen, mm -hmm. when in 2016 and 2017, we found out that the FBI, well, actually, we found out later, but we know now that in 2016, 2017, the FBI relied on similar type hearsay allegations from an uncorroborated, unverified source mm -hmm. to solicit warrants, actual warrants to spy on Trump's foreign policy advisors, including Carter Page. Where is your outrage about that? My understanding, you're talking about the Steele document, right? I'm talking about the Steele dossier mm -hmm. and the underlying subsource and how it relates to the warrants retrieved by the Justice Department. Yeah, my understanding, you tell me if I'm wrong, my understanding is for the Steele dossier, um, there wasn't like that dossier that was given. All of the stuff on that dossier was like accurately assessed by Steele himself before it was turned over to the FBI, right? Like Steele didn't say, this is a fact, this is a fact, this is 100% true, this is blah, 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 right? Or am I wrong on that? Did he, did he lie? Did he? My understanding is the biggest deal for that misrepresentation is that when Steele, that Steele dossier was turned over by the guy that made the tip off to the FBI, I think mm -hmm. he said something like, this was, I want to say he said something like this is for a campaign or something, but he didn't specify that it was like the Hillary and Clinton opposition well, research that. or they something. They knew it was opposition. They knew it was opposition. Did they know? Okay, because I thought yeah. that was the biggest part. But other than that, they turned the dossier over to the FBI, and then the FBI did their digging based on the tips. But I don't think that they were. They did. Were they able to solicit uh, warrants like solely off the dossier? Well, there were other things that they considered for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Carter Page's trips to Russia, things like that. Mm -hmm. But. That was one that that was a I think a without those that dossier they probably wouldn't have gone after those warrants. Yeah, but that's your, getting it getting it. There's nothing wrong with getting a tip. So for instance, the, mm -hmm. my issue is the reporting of here. This would be my issue. Okay, to make this an equivalent, this would be my issue. If Democrats came and by the way, maybe some did do this, and if they did, I would condemn that. If a Democratic lawmaker came out on TV and said, we know that there are Donald Trump P tapes because of the Steele dossier, then I'd say this is probably not appropriate, right? But if there they, were a lot of people talking all kinds of crazy stuff. Hold on, stuff careful. We had to be very careful about a lot of people talking a lot of crazy stuff, right? Okay, just go um, on, yeah. Well, but, well, fuck, but hold on. This is also complicated though by the fact that the dossier got leaked to the media too, right? Why is that complicated? Because, because if it's leaked to the media, then I could understand why people are talking about it. But that's different um, than somebody, okay. because my understanding is that confidential, um, the confidential informer report, was that leaked to the media or did that come out via Republican congressional? Well, the stuff? Republicans pushed for that to be released. Yes, so that's well, different. I, I agree with you. Yeah, there's that's, wait, that, that's, a, that's meaningfully different, I think. All right, tell me about it. So, well, wait, well, first of all, what are we assessing here? Are we assessing well, the culpability of elected officials or the FBI, the double standards of the DOJ, if they sure. exist? What, what, do you, what do you want to assess or like which piece? Here, this is what I think is important, okay? So, uh, okay, so I'm drawing a little thing on stream, okay? So on here, you've got some like, you've got like a, a mess of, um, well, I'll just call these tips, okay? Tips. Tips. So this might be, uh, somebody calls the FBI and they say, my neighbor uh, dresses like a Muslim every day and I hear him calling chants to prayer and I think I saw him with wires on a vest once, okay? That might just be, just might be like a random tip, okay? And then from there, you have your investigatory bodies. Um, so I'll just say you've got your your letters, okay? Your FBI's, your yeah. uh, whatever, okay? And then after this, you have, um, well, I'll, I'll have, uh, we'll say on the left, you've got your, we'll say the DOJ, and then on the right, we'll say like congressional, okay? Okay. Um, so this is what I would imagine the flow should look like in a normal in, in, a, in a normal process, right? So tips or anonymous shit is sent to, you know, uh, the government, the FBI, the, the NSA, FBI, the CIA, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They do their investigations and they figure out their shit. Once they finish their investigations, they might re make recommendations to the DOJ. They might present their findings in front of like a congressional committee, uh, you know, Senate Intel or uh, House, whatever bullshit. And then from there, something is like stated publicly or something goes out publicly, right? Do you think this process is about how it should be, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the issue that you have 
is when people in Congress are going down to this, to the tips part, and dragging information from here out to present to the public. That is wholly unethical, I think. Well, well hang on. The, yeah. the Congress was, even in this example, they're going after the letters. They're talking to the to the, the FBI, right? So at least bring, they're not going right to, they don't even know this guy Spiridonov's name. So they're definitely, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Congress, although sometimes Congress does go to the to whistleblowers and stuff, right? Sometimes Congress goes directly to those people and drags them in front of hearings. Congress will bring in for the, let's say for the, a January 6th report, right? Congress has an investigatory like role. Part of the reason we have that Jan 6th report is because Congress is is getting specific witnesses to testify. Sure, and, I, I, I understand. Even, I understand yeah. what you're saying there, um, and I might maybe I'm fundamentally misunderstanding some of the congressional bodies or something. I understand what you're saying mm -hmm. there, and then that could be a legitimate use of investigations. But I feel like when Congress is doing that, I and I feel like that's they're stepping in as the role of like investigator. So if a committee is like doing something where they're doing an investigation and they need to start accessing this, I think that that's an appropriate role of Congress. And again, I'm pushing back partly. Mm -hmm. It's, but partly this is stuff I believe, partly mm -hmm. not. But but he, hang on a second. Yeah. So this is Congress. This is Jim Jordan. This is James Comer. They are doing an investigation. They're yep. doing an impeachment inquiry. Correct. Just like we did an impeachment inquiry. We got witnesses mm -hmm. for what happened with Trump and what happened to the Ukraine, the perfect call. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing now. So why can't they go and get some information from the FBI and, and talk about it, think about it, and, and consider it as part of their impeachment inquiry? Well, hold on. Okay, so let's be very, very, very clear with what I think is the immoral thing, okay? I don't think that anything that Comer and Jim Jordan have done is bad in regards to their investigation. The bad thing is taking pieces of information and making it public before the investigation is over. I think that's mm. highly unethical. So if they want to go to the FBI, they want to go to the sources, they want to, uh, you know, um, uh, they want to, I, I guess Congress has power to depose or make people present testimony or whatever yeah, in front sure of themselves. Yeah. yeah, if they want to do that, I think that's totally fine, even if I think they're all of that is bullshit. Uh, Jim Jordan and all of them are within the right to do it as members of Congress, as members of their whatever committees, but for them to selectively leak it or make parts of the investigation public, that is so outside the norm of, of almost anything. That just seems insane to me. So leaking parts of investigations and making them partially public that's bad. I mean, but Congress had a bunch of public hearings in the course of coming to the report. So as a matter of just doing this sequentially, when Congress was bringing a bunch of hearings in an order, mm -hmm. it was by definition incomplete. And they were bringing testimony that was curated and picked according to the people who they wanted to bring on. I mean, for the, on if you're talking about for the J6 committee, for yeah. wasn't this they, after they it was, wasn't this was after it was over or no? After Jan after what was over? Um, wasn't that After once they finished putting no, it all, was, or this was no, during? Part of, this is, they had public hearings and private stuff, and, and a lot of that was known to the public before they released their report. Hmm. Um, and, and, and so there's some piecemeal stuff going on here, and that's just a matter, of course, a lot of these congressional investigations, like <clears throat> um, we hear about them or how they're going while they're happening. Do you, so when really you the, give um The piecemeal nature of it, that, that, that you have a problem with it, or is it active misrepresentations that where there's a risk of, of the public being misinformed. Yeah, I'm trying to think now. Maybe maybe the issue is less with the selective leaking and more it's with the stuff being informed, misinformed. Because I was going to say the difference between the congressional stuff is that at least when people are in front of Congress testifying publicly, those people are always under oath. But you told me that that confidential informant form, that guy was under oath as well, right? Uh, I don't know if he was under oath. He, he, he agreed to tell the truth. He, or not under oath, but he's like signed it with a penalty of if he's lying, he's going to get in trouble, right? Yeah, but if he lied anyway to the FBI about something material, he would be, he knows that he could be charged criminally. He knows about that he's been repeatedly like reminded many, many times. And so he understands that there's a penalty to lying to the FBI mm -hmm. about a material fact related to the investigation. So any amount of like he's under oath versus he's under the penalty of being charged by the FBI, I would say there's roughly an equivalence here in terms of the potential penalties. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the CHS Smirnov was absolutely aware that he, if he lied, he could be charged and he now he is being charged for lying. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. I'm trying to think then of what, I'm th there's two tracks I'm on now. One is I wonder if having somebody coming in um, to testify against something that would be so huge would be inappropriate. So I'm trying to think in the J6 stuff, if like a random staffer from the White House were to come in and it was just him reporting that like Trump like raped mm -hmm. somebody, would that be appropriate in front of a congressional committee? Or if it's not that- I don't wanna bring it up. I, I don't what? wanna bring it up, but you know what I'm gonna, what people will bring up. I'm not gonna bring it up, but I, you know what conservatives might bring up. 
Well, wait, why would you not bring it up? Well, I'll bring it up. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say it's not necessarily my opinion. Sure. But the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. Um, oh, with the Christy, Christine whatever? Blazer? Yeah. Or Ford? Dr. Ford. Dr. Ford. Um, for the, what, what was, so the Senate has a job to confirm um, to confirm a Supreme Court justice, correct? Mm -hmm. um, was when she was brought up, was that part of a separate investigation slash case, or was that part of the Senate hearings for um, Brett Kavanaugh's co uh, confirmation? Yeah, it was part of that confirmation hearing. But it, it was like, so he was pretty much flying through, and then this came up, and then they had like emergency hearings and mm -hmm. stuff, and they, and and they brought her before the hearing in front of the entire country to mm -hmm. give testimony, to which only. Uh, you know, there's some corroboration in terms of she she there, there's some people after the fact who whom she confided in, and there's like some kind of circumstantial evidence, but but mostly it relies on her direct testimony. How how ordinary is it? I don't know. What is the uh, normal procedure for um, people coming to testify relating to a Supreme Court confirmation? Does that does that happen? Like a Supreme Court judge confirmation? Well, there was a similar situation with Clarence Thomas. What, what was, remind me, for refresh my brain. So, there was an allegation made as to Clarence Thomas um, from uh, from Anita Hill, who was someone who had worked with him in the, I think, Department of Education or, so, or something like that as a, as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if she came in front of the committee for live testimony actually now as I'm sitting here, but there's some history of, of people making certain accusations in Congress. Wow, the dark device, thanks for gifting 10 memberships. Is that, is that yeah, and Joe, I believe Joe Biden was sharing that that uh, is that is that the um, is that an appropriate forum for that to happen though isn't that the forum for that to happen isn't that where it's it supposed could be to? but whether it's an appropriate forum mm -hmm. or not like this is an appropriate this investigation is about Joe Biden Joe Bi like the that committee was absolutely allowed to investigate impropriety as relates to Joe Biden because they you know they it was that specific purpose and to investigate potential bribes that Joe Biden took mm -hmm. as vice president and this is a allegation pertaining to that thing exactly. And it's given to the FBI, and at least the FBI in their own 1023 said that he was reliable. Hmm. Again, I'm not, this is not necessarily my opinion, but I'm just giving you pushback. Which I think yeah, no, sure. So now I wonder if my issue is with the process of procedure of making that public or if it's just because I think that people aren't doing their due diligence. Because if in the course of an investigation, let's say somebody, let's say that there was like a, like three confidential informants came through with pretty incontrovertible proof that Donald Trump or like Joe Biden like murdered some woman on a table. Mm -hmm. Like, would I expect uh, a committee to make that public like right now before the election? I think I probably would, I would imagine, right? You'd want that to mm -hmm. be public pretty soon. Um, or would you before like... Uh, let me tell you where I am. At, where I am on all this. Yeah, go for so, it. Uh -huh. um, on this 1023, the mm -hmm. reason why I treat this very differently is because, number one, the Department of Justice specifically asked to withhold this, presumably for a good reason. That is because they could not speak to its reliability, and after having had that sort of um, that being told to to the um, committee, they not only spread it around after being asked not to do so, they continually touted it as damning evidence of Joe Biden's guilt. Mm -hmm. And so one thing is to present the evidence that exists. Another thing is to present evidence that's been specifically cautioned not to be, to please don't let this out, presumably because it relates to current investigations, which it did. There was an ongoing special counsel investigation into issues related to this matter by David Weiss. But then when you're told that we can't speak to the credibility of this and the allegations themselves pertain to a hearsay statement by the underlying owner of Burisma in that situation to take that information and uh, which absolutely relates to uh, issues of sources and methods and um, informants and spies and all that stuff mm -hmm. in an ongoing investigation where the information is not credible relating to a secondhand account and you are taking that information and presenting it as though it were damning smoking gun evidence of Joe Biden's guilt in a bribery scheme, I think it's deeply, deeply unethical. Gotcha. So then maybe my biggest issue then is just the, uh, is the actual substance of everything, the misrepresentation of the strength of the evidence maybe. Yeah.
But then how do you distinguish the Steele dossier and Democrat conducts? And, and who are we assessing in terms of culpability? Are we assessing- I'm trying to think, were Democrat lawmakers making any of that public before it got pushed to the media? Because I thought that that Steele dossier had been floating around behind the scenes for quite some time and nobody it really- It went to BuzzFeed. Yeah, but I, I thought it went to yeah. well, I thought it went to BuzzFeed like months after I was floating around with a lot of other people first because I thought a lot of other mainstream media people had decided not to publish it and then BuzzFeed got a hold of it and they were like ah fuck it let's publish it which makes me think that a lot of people had a hold of that before um, before it actually went public on BuzzFeed and they decided not to say anything about it. Well, again, I come back to who are we assessing wrongdoing? Who are you most interested in? in criticizing when it comes to the 10, well, right, right now my criticisms for, my, my main criticisms for the Republicans is they seem to have an issue assessing the strength of evidence for the, um, for okay. the level of the claim that they're making. So for instance, that Comer video that he put out showing how Joe Biden profits 10%. off of Hunter Biden's crimes. <laughs> and it's there's like the six different companies involved. And then some people are paying back Joe Biden with a loan that they got from, with money. Like, like that whole thing is like, this is retarded. Yeah. So you're assessing the average Trumper we're not, well, not, unfortunately, not just the average Trumper, but the the Trump lawmakers as well, right? Okay. Well, do you think they care about the underlying factual predicate of what's going on here? Do you think they were duped, or do you think they're the ones doing the duping? I think the lawmakers are doing the duping, and I think the Trumples are just along for the ride because they're too stupid to know okay. otherwise. The lawmakers so I hold to a much there. higher uh, standard, or even media pundits, than uh, an ordinary dipshit Trump voter. Got it. So you're both criticizing the duping and the underlying um, failure to discern quality information versus you know, bullshit or unable to. Or Maybe. Least, I, guess I mean, I don't even level. know if the underlying issue is happening. Maybe they know it's bullshit, but they're like, eh, fuck it, we've got something, let's run with it. Because I don't think they're right. stupid. Do you think Democrats, would you ever levy that with respect to the SEAL dossier? Because there's there's some information that has yet, like is not corroborated and is contradicted by by evidence, right? Um, I still don't understand, you keep, so you keep bringing up the still dossier. My two points for the still dossier is that one, I'm not aware of, and like I said, this might've happened, I just didn't know, but I'm not aware of any Democratic lawmakers making that public before it got leaked to the media. That's one part we're, of it. We're talking about the making it public. I'm just talking about the, right now I'm focusing mm -hmm. on the Democratic. Yeah, yeah, sure, I understand. You're, you're that, that was, the way that, yeah, sure, that was one yeah. part, but then the second part was, I'm not aware of, um, I don't think I'm aware of Democrats that were building huge parts of their argument on the on stuff in the steel dossier for Trump being compromised by Russia or whatever. I feel like the really? most I feel like what I heard the most in the media was the um, it was the DNC hack and it was the thirty thousand emails thing, which were all public. People statements. saying that, that that Trump was a Russian spy, a Russian plant, on the basis of the steel dossier. God, I, okay. I feel like I feel like the most I heard from the steel dossier said publicly was like the P tapes thing, and then I feel I heard everybody referenced the DNC hacks, and everybody referenced the uh, the thirty thousand emails thing. Wait, I feel like those on. are the, the things the I heard DS, the most. The uh -huh. DNC hacks had to do with Russia intervening in the election, which I correct. Think I agree with you mm -hmm. that everyone was saying Russia interfered because of this. But there's an additional link here. It's not just Russia is bad; mm -hmm. it's Russia and Trump are bad. And the link between Trump bad um, because of Russia had to do with the connective tissue, I think, provided um, not only that tissue, there's other stuff there too, uh -huh. and I would call it out too right now, even currently, but a lot of the main kind of thrust of it was because of bad feels related to the connective tissue provided by the SEAL dossier, where they're like, not only is Trump pro-Putin, Trump pro-Russia, he says all these Russian talking points, uh -huh. he openly was acknowledging trying to get aid from Russian intelligence service as relates to the DNC service, not only that, we think there may actually be a more private, more um, formal conspiracy or formal um, relationship between Russia intelligence and Trump related to the stuff in the SEAL dossier. I think that that was going on hmm. among Democrat voters, or do you disagree with that? Well, hold on, you keep saying voters. I'm thinking of like well, Democrat, the Democrats lawmakers the and the pundits, yeah. Well, but I thought that you were criticizing MAGA voters, MAGA people. No, 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 no. Hold wait, wait. Let me restate and be very clear. I very, very clearly okay. said that MAGA voters, I think, are just dumb. Um, all voters are probably dumb. My main source of contention were the lawmakers and then like pundits, mm -hmm. like people that should know better, like pundits. media heads. Yeah. Okay. So not, I think not, Democratic pundits yeah. were mm -hmm. also doing that same stuff. 
Um, there were dumb some toys. doing dumb things for sure. That uh, Ray, was it Rachel Maddow said a lot of stupid shit. That's absolutely true. Um, Chris, fuck, not Chris Wells. There's other people. Matthews. Uh, Matthews, maybe <laughs> is he MSNBC as well? I don't. I don't know. I MSNBC has a lot of stupid shit on it. Yeah, pr- so, pr- I think. There, there were probably a lot of them doing stupid shit as well. Yeah, I'd have to go back and check, but I would. Yeah, I mean, I would equally call these people out too for doing st- stupid things for sure. Okay, I, I think that that's something that you should, if you're ever going to have these conversations, mm-hmm. you should take a look in the past at like what were the kind of claims being made by both Democratic lawmakers because it wasn't just pundits; it was also lawmakers, uh, lawmakers and pundits. What, what were they saying on with respect to, as of yet, then uncorroborated? Steel dossier allegations uh-huh. because remember at that time the crossfire hurricane investigation had not ended when the the steel dossier was released it was still an ongoing investigation and i believe they even got fisa warrants after the steel dossier was released to the public and so you should take a look if you're ever going to have these discussions and go attack trumples about the 1023 i think you should be well versed yeah, I might go of- back. Yeah, sure. I can go back and look up some of it. But like, there's two parts here. Is it one, like if for because especially some stuff related to Russia collusion, uh, there were definitely pundits that overplayed their hand on that. Like, I wouldn't deny that. But like, I can very easily condemn my side on that. Number one. Um, but number two, the strengths of the claims, the veracity of the claims and factually like what ends up being true is also significantly different. Um, on both mm-hmm. sides for as much as the democratic pundits might have overplayed their hand um, or might have like focused too much on some things they are way more in the realm of being correct than the than the trumples who are literally in fantasy land um, in terms of like their claims where there is absolutely no attachment to the ground uh, in terms of reality okay so the what, what's the stuff that's not based in reality it's the allegations of bribery and the Burisma? It's, yeah, it's, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's QAnon, it's Pizzagate, it's the Seth Richards, like, the Hillary Clinton kill list, um, mm-hmm. it's the, 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 um, the, the, the deep state corroboration with Hillary Clinton to exonerate her of, like, all of her crimes in the email stuff and with Burisma, um, or not Burisma, with Hillary Clinton and Benghazi. It's the Joe Biden, Hunter Biden crime family, like, 100% guaranteed link because of the big man email. Uh, like, all of these <laughs> things are way more in yeah. fantasy land than saying Donald Trump uh, colluded with Russia is a Russian yeah asset? is a Russian asset or spy which is an extreme claim and to my understanding so far is incorrect and I don't think there's strong evidence to prove any of that but with a guy that not only had um, uh, not Malkovich um, the guy that was working with um, Manafort? Manafort that had Manafort on his uh, election campaign running his election campaign um, who was okay, in who, who was indicted uh, who was working with pro-Russian assets, not reporting his stuff to the State Department, ends up getting pardoned by Trump. When you've got people like Roger Stone, who are more or less coordinating with uh, the Guccifer hacker who did hack the DNC to release stuff. Uh, and and uh, when you do have people that were like uh, Page as well, lied to the F... Uh, it was Page, right? Um, no, no, it was Flynn. It was Flynn. It was Flynn. Um, who lied to the FBI about kind of like... that. That stuff is way more in the realm of like a lot of it being okay, true right, and right, in the right. yeah go ahead i, I just want an easy question yeah, yeah go ahead yeah do you think it's a more plausible allegation or a more a less unhinged allegation to say joe biden took a bribe from burisma in exchange for certain um official actions mm-hmm. versus trump is a russian asset between those two which is more or less unhinged or equal level kind of level um oof Okay, here's what makes that difficult to evaluate, is the, your, your priors, right, if we basing this out, the likelihood of somebody taking a bribe is way higher than the likelihood of somebody being a foreign asset, especially when we get into presidents, right? Okay. So the prior for Biden would start way, 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 way higher on that, right? The likelihood- okay, be, let, me, let me be more well, specific. No, wait, well, no I, yeah, I'm okay. just walking through my thought process, right? Sure. So the prior for Biden, if you're, if you're being honest, the prior for a politician taking a bribe is way higher than the prior for a politician being like a foreign agent, right? Okay. Well, yeah, that's one. But then when we start to adjust with things that we know, I think that these two things cross in terms of likelihood. Um, so for instance, when the evidence for Joe Biden is built on like 
public statements he's made about getting rid of Shokin, where they're like, oh, well, look, right here, Biden says he was going to withhold aid if they didn't do it. Or when the yeah. evidence that we've seen, like the big man, like emails are shoddy to not existent. And then when we know that Hunter Biden is like the most investigated fucking American in, all, in the entirety of the wait, wait, wait. what? Come on. Trump has been investigated way more than Hunter Biden. Ha wait, has there ever been direct surveillance of Donald Trump? I don't know if direct surveillance has That's there been a big deal. Hunter, has there been direct surveillance of Hunter Biden? My understanding is there has been. There ha like the FBI been, has directly been, surveilled and directly- uh, With like wires and shit? I haven't heard of that. Th that's not true? How do they find out I, some of the stuff relating to, you don't think they've ever gotten warrants or anything for investigating Hunter Biden directly? I don't know if they've gotten warrants, but they've gotten warrants on Trump, just to be clear. They searched Mar-a-Lago. Well, is that Trump or? That's Trump. They searched Mar-a-Lago. Have they searched any of his like personal residences? Uh, I don't know if they've done that with with Hunter though either, right? It's like has they have they executed a search warrant on Hunter Biden's residence? I don't know that. I'm trying to think if I remember if they were surveilling Hunter's um if they were saying Hunter's has communications been investigated or not. a yeah. lot. There, I mean, this crossfire mm -hmm. hurricane and special counsel investigation, mm -hmm. they were interviewing all kinds of people. They were interviewing, you know, and, and especially with the other investigations as well. Mm -hmm. At, like, Hunter Biden has been investigated, so has Trump. I'm, I'm seeing a parallel there. And I don't think you can say reasonably that Hunter Biden was investigated more than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if, if, I, if I would agree with that. Wait, am I making this up or? Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, but hold on. We're investigating for different things, though, right? Okay. Like when you're investigating, so for instance, like the Mar-a-Lago stuff, those quote unquote investigations weren't for anything related to Russia collusion. Those are things related to documents that yeah, we're supposed I to turn over. Yeah, the New York sure. stuff wasn't for Russia collusion. That was relating Correct. to the payments that um, Cohen made to Stormy Daniels, right? That's also now, but look, if they the come Hunter across something related that, to tax stuff uh -huh. and related to drug stuff, and you well, know, hold stuff. on, hold on. Um, was it related to like tax stuff and everything, or did the tax stuff yeah. just come out of the other investigations? Like, was it was that's it when why, searching? That's why I want an in, I want an uh -huh. inspector general report because I don't know that. I don't, yeah, I don't know that actually. because I thought that the tax stuff came out while they were trying to find the Burisma stuff, and then they find these other payments. They were like, oh, well, we don't think it's reported correctly. Now you have tax owing and blah 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 blah. That they came as so a result. Look, of let's that. get back to the claim. Do you think that there's mm -hmm. a way to like meaningfully distinct? Like, right now, given public information that you're aware of. Do you have a way to say that Hunter Biden has been investigated more than Donald Trump on the stuff that you think is relevant? Do I think that Hunter Biden has been investigated more than Donald Trump on the stuff that I think is relevant? Is that what you With said? With respect to these the respective claims of, of either Joe bribery and or Donald Trump Russian agent. I mean, there was this thing called the Mueller report. There was, yeah. I thought I read in the Mueller report that they were never able to surveil Trump directly. Am I making that up? They, they I don't think they ever got like wiretaps while he's president uh -huh. or and I'm or like any of his inboxes them. like emails or any of his direct communication he doesn't email though right so like it's not he doesn't i he, thought he does he i thought does. he has a phone where he does it he literally does text he and doesn't email use and email i think it's well established he doesn't email i could have sworn that there was a big meme after hillary's emails that donald trump emails people on his phone am i making this up i have to go back and check it's been a while yeah, now. I, don't, I don't think he emails hmm Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess if I was going to debate this, I would have to go back and like get 100% uh, accounting of all the facts. Don't but, you think it's it's, mm -hmm. it's just that it's in the same domain of like not having evidence to say, I know that Trump is a Russian asset in the sense that he is an agent of Putin and not in the kind of more political sense where we can say he's an agent of Putin because he's anti-NATO or he's an agent of Putin because he repeats their talking points or welcomes their talking points. But when we say like he is compromised in the other way versus Joe Biden took a bribe, as between those two statements, are you willing to say that one is more or less unhinged? Based on like everything we know and the strength of everything, like I, I would say that the, I would say that the, um, I think the Biden one is more unhinged, but both of those statements are pretty unhinged, right? Like we don't have good evidence or any evidence that like Trump is an agent of Russia. That, like, that is an mm -hmm. unhinged statement if you say that. Um, but the evidence that people are using to say that Biden is taking, is, is that evidence that's been presented is wholly unconvincing. Um, Agreed. Yeah. So both are dumb and bad statements. The priors on one are way different. The chance of Biden being guilty of that statement versus Trump is way higher with your priors. But when you start to adjust based on evidence collected, um, yeah, I would say that um, I, I feel like the statements made about the Biden stuff are way more unhinged than the statements made about the Trump stuff. Oh, so you think it's more interesting to say that Biden took a bribe from Burisma than it is to say 
Yes. Trump is a Russian asset. Uh, yeah, I think. But like slightly okay. so. Like both of these statements are pretty unhinged, I think. Okay. But hey, it, maybe more will it, come it, out. Maybe I, Comer I, I, and Ryan will give us good information and we'll figure out like... Listen, my brain is very attuned to the double standard arguments. And so I just want to like... Mm -hmm. When the easy comeback for a lot of people is going to be for... This here, well, here I'm, curious, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. Tomorrow, okay? The universe splits, okay? Two headlines drop. I'm curious. In which world is Pisco more shocked, okay? Let's say tomorrow a headline comes out and it says in 2015, no, no, <laughs> in 2014, emails leaked that shows uh, Donald Trump in conversation with KGB agent where he says, hey, if you push a lot on this Obama birth certificate stuff, um, we might uh, help you out with some information relating to future candidates in your in an election cycle in 2016. Okay, that's mm -hmm. one headline. So that releases, and Trump says, "Okay, sure, I'll push this." And then in another world, a headline comes out, and it says um, Joe Biden alters, you know, like U.S. foreign policy to help his son Hunter Biden, you know, secure deals with Burisma. Um, for both those headlines to come out, which one is more surprising to you? Which would be more surprising to you? I think the Biden one would be more surprising to me, but I have to acknowledge that, that part of that has to do with my bias, where I think that Joe Biden is a better person, where I think that Joe Biden... Um, yeah, but even when you, you say, know, like, bias that he's a better person, it's a guy that's been in the Senate for, what, like, fucking 50 years or some shit? A long time, yeah. He's been Since in the Senate 29. for a long time. My understanding is his record is like pretty clean. I think he kind of makes stuff up sometimes when he gives a, didn't he lie about like the school that he went to or some stupid shit and like a campaign uh, speech? Like, wait, I think Joe Biden lied about it? Yeah, or like, it, no, Joe Biden did. I think it was something stupid like that. Or he said he graduated top of his class. I don't remember, it was something dumb like that. Like, but for the most part, like Joe Biden's record is pretty clean. Whereas Donald Trump has got like a questionable record in some cases and is engaged in some like weird questionable. Story. And to be fair to Donald Trump, not necessarily to be his character, he is a billionaire. So he will have connections everywhere in the world. And he's probably done stuff that we don't know about. Being a billionaire to get to where he is, blah, blah, blah. Not to impeach him directly as a for his character or whatever. But like, yeah, the idea or something that would come out that would show that like, oh, Donald Trump was actually like taking notes from the Kremlin on some things. I just don't mm -hmm. even know if that would necessarily be that surprising. It would be like a definitely a huge deal. Um, whereas the Joe Biden would be like, oof, that'd be a major disappointment. Like, bro, you were in the Senate for this long. You ran for president one time. Yeah, you but were like you're kind of yeah. making the, the, the Trump one less severe. Like one thing is to say Trump was taking notes from Putin or Russia or like hints mm -hmm. from them. He was our, we already know he was kind of doing that in a, in a little public way, right? With this little public flirtation that they yeah. had going on. But what we're talking about is what the Democrats were alleging isn't that. It, was, it wasn't like he was publicly being more sympathetic to Putin or he was taking some cues from Putin or Russia talking points. What they were saying is Russia, or sorry, Putin, or sorry, Trump is compromised. And because of P tapes and other compromise, he is actively under the allegiance of the Russian Federation. That is separate, separate from like Trump as an American president or candidate. He is taking cues because he thinks it's in his best interest to take cues from Russia, as opposed to Trump is an agent of Russia, which, which implies a kind of master servant relationship where you are sort of paying uh, homage or you, you have a, a direct link between Russia and and Trump. Mm -hmm. I think that when you say that you're in hypoth hypothetical world, hey, do this, we'll do that, that kind of still is able to have Trump as a independent actor who can assess for himself what's best for his candidacy. Whereas what Democrats are kind of pushing is, this guy is not even loyal to the United States. He is loyal to mother Russia. That's I guess when I think of, yeah, I understand. That's, yeah, which is a which is an out there argument. Um, I guess that when I, uh, when, when I assess Trump's presidency, like to where I have his current wrongs, they're already about there um, in that I don't know how much worse it is in my mind that Donald Trump would be willing to throw over like the entire US democratic system to entrench his own power. I don't know how much worse it would be if he was a Russian agent. I don't even know if it would be worse. I would have to think about that. Like, cause these are pretty close to me in terms of horribleness. Um, mm -hmm. So whether like they're the, the, bad or yeah. good, it mm -hmm. has to do with the unhingedness or hingedness of someone. <laughs> no, I understand, but I'm saying, but I think that yeah. like all the stuff relating to Donald Trump's presidency, because we got it for four years, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Mm -hmm. But I think we're already, that to me is already at a level of unhingedness that's either equivalent to, close to, or surpasses the unhingedness of being like a foreign agent to me. Um, it, that's already like a really, really big out there thing, but I don't know. What about election stolen versus Trump's a Russian agent? Which, which one of those is more unhinged? Election stolen versus Trump's a foreign agent? 
Yeah. Like, what what would you have to be more unhinged to believe? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe election stolen. Yeah, just there was there. It, there's just so much that went into that. Yeah. Like, if you still believe it was stolen, there are so many. You're talking about like tens of thousands of people now that are corroborating against you. You're in the gang stalking world, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, can you explain gang stalking to me? I don't because I I heard you reference it with respect to one of your the people you've interacted with before. The I don't actually. Yeah. What does it mean? So I think that when you're when you are suffering from uh, schizophrenia with paranoia delusions. I think that one of the paranoias you have is that people are watching you or tracking you, um, or there's always somebody, it's like a paranoia that you develop. I don't think it rises to the level of hallucinations, but you might see people walking around with AirPods and think like, this guy's following me as part of the government. And unfortunately, you ever hear the joke I make where it's like, oh, like, you know, 10 years ago, if you wanted to fuck a toaster, you were weird, but now you can go online and find a forum of toaster fuckers that'll all tell you like the best toasters. I've never heard you say that, but. Oh yeah, like today on the internet, you can find people to spread anything. Well, it seems to be the case that a lot of people that are likely suffering from paranoia, uh, schizophrenic delusions, now have places where they can go and all talk about how the government is tracking and following all of them. Uh, And the subreddit for that is called gang stalking. So people that believe in gang stalking think that there are literally hundreds of people sent after them by the government to keep tabs on their daily life to fuck with them and make them think they're crazy oh, uh, wow. and to yeah. like, yeah, report on them and inform on them and yeah. But Russia, but Trump is a Russian agent is not on that level. You think that there's a step removed from that? No, yeah, the gang stalking shit is okay. literally like you are, you yeah. have a, um, yeah, you've got a paranoid, you're, yeah, you're mentally fucked, yeah. <laughs> like you have, like you need medication, like you're crazy, an actual crazy person at that point. Listen, man, I, I think that there are some important differences between steel dossier allegations in terms of the culpable conduct of one, potentially the FBI mm-hmm. and Congress people um, and with the FD 1023. And so I've given you some pushback, but I think that there are some differences here that are important, but you need to calibrate who are we criticizing and what should be the response. I think that there ought to be an immediate, um, at least the start of an inspector general or special counsel investigation into the origins here just like there was for the Clinton or the Crossfire Hurricane investigation. There was a Durham report, there was an IG report. And we need to get to the bottom of, was this investigation started for improper reasons or was there any kind of improper or unlawful investigatory techniques taken Uh um, in the process of it? But I think that one thing that you should distinguish- You're talking about for the FBI, Crossfire Hurricane? Yes, or no, no, for the FD 1023 right now. Oh, sure, Because we have Bill Barr opening up a back channel to to vet information for to target the Bidens, mm-hmm. that sounds like exactly what Republicans were complaining about. Yeah, um, that they were saying Biden there, was doing to Trump, right? Yeah, Biden was doing to Trump or the Obama Department of Justice and FBI and the letter, lettered agencies were doing to Trump. And so mm-hmm. to the extent that you are a Republican listening to this now on YouTube or wherever you guys are, are there Republicans in Kick? What's the um, I partisan think makeup Kick here? is like, there, there, I think there are more Republicans in YouTube chat, but I think okay. that Kick is an okay Republican representation. If you were mad because you think that the Obama DOJ and lettered agencies were going after Trump specifically, mm-hmm. I think that you should be just as suspicious and calling for investigations into the Department of Justice to see what was the start of this investigation, which at Trump's urging, uh-huh. there was a process for Rudy Giuliani to push in misinformation, and and out of that comes out this Russian disinformation from from Smirnoff and the confidential human source. So I want an investigation to find out who knew what when, because maybe it's worse. Maybe it's worse than the the kind of hypo- hypothetical suppositions of the Democrats in response to the Steele dossier. Um, maybe it's the same because they're and they're just like going off on these wild goose chases because they I, I don't know they're unwitting informants or they're unwitting. Um, assets to whatever this Russian disinformation was. But we should get to the bottom of it, because I don't know ne- right now what level of culpability some of these actors have without an investigation. Yeah, but so the problem with this conversation is it like, it like, and maybe I can't speak for all Democrats, maybe a lot of them are like really poisoned, I'm not sure. But like if a report came out tomorrow and it said that like every single initial FISA warrant was built on bad stuff on the Steele dossier, that the FBI was too politically partisan to evaluate properly, then like my response would be like, oh, well, I think that uh, I agree with the Durham suggestion that the FBI, maybe they need red teams to work on politically sensitive issues, or maybe there are changes that they should implement to like change these things. And, you know, if these investigations were built on bad warrants, I think that's bad and it shouldn't happen in the future. But there is 
no level of evidence that you could show a conservative to show that anything about Hunter Biden is wrong. Like if this investigation follows through and finds out that, oh, a lot of the Hunter Biden investigations were inappropriately built on this confidential informant that lied, they're not going to change any of their minds. Maybe like 10% of them will, but probably not. Like they're just going to say, oh, well, the deep state is lying about this. Oh, well, the informant was probably tortured or oh, the Hillary Clinton killed this card of this guy. Like they're not like they're already completely gone on, on these opinions and they're not changing no matter what they see for evidence. Fair enough. Which I think is lying. But maybe there are more Democrats like that than I'm aware of. I'm sure there's a lot of I think there are some. I think there are some. Yeah, there are definitely some for sure, yeah. But also I feel like, I I, I, I could be wrong. Maybe I need to watch more mainstream media. I feel like Democrats in general have kind of moved on from like the Russiagate thing. There might still be some people that say it, but in terms of like the hardcore like Russia agent claims, are a lot of mainstream Democrats still making these claims or have they kind of like moved on? I I don't think so, but there's, you know, yeah, I don't know. But like are Republicans still... I guess they are, right? Talking about election fraud? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh, yeah, they are. (laughs) I I hear you on that, for sure. And I do think that there's maybe a difference there. But Mm -hmm. that shouldn't absolve... uh, Like, Democrats need to do more than that with respect to some of the stuff that came out in the IG report. Mm -hmm. I think they should condemn some of the actions taken by... By the FBI when they with the specifically the process for the FISA warrants. I don't think we should ought, we ought to be like hysterical about it, but it was bad for them to do that, and it, and this could have been likewise bad with respect to the 1023. Yeah, sure. I don't necessarily yeah. disagree with you. Um, the only issue that I worry about, and this is like a, I'm taking a very moralistic, I hope good prevails issue or position here. Remember when me and Josiah were arguing with you, uh, was it like a year ago when the special investigator about the Biden stuff? Oh, we haven't talked about that yet. Yeah, and you were happy. You're like, well, I'm glad they have a special investigator, really investigated, blah, 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 right? Well, um, now I'm mad. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, because, well, now it fucked us hard. (laughs) Well, well, hang on a second. Yeah? Hang on. So, I want to criticize you a couple couple things. Sure. Wait, also, I do have to read this today, so. I know, I know. This, This won't be that long. Okay. But number one, I was absolutely right, I think. Okay. From the beginning, when I was like calling for a special counsel into Joe Biden. Okay. Because remember, I did that, and you guys were like, oh, we know. Yeah, we right both away disagreed. And I, but I was wait, like, wait, yeah, wait, 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 wait. What did we say? You were like, I, I think you criticized me when I said there's a lot of similarities here, uh, you know, obstruction Correct. notwithstanding. Okay. Remember that? Yeah, that okay. So that because it sounded like you were gonna say we both knew that there was no foul play. I think what we both said was that there wasn't evidence. No, I think what we said was that the two cases were incredibly dissimilar. There's no reason right now to think there was foul play. They could probably do the normal investigative measures. I don't know why they need a special counsel for it. Uh, Okay, well I'll go back. I've linked the the discussion we had a little bit of it, but I was on the I was on the position of let's get a special counsel because it's the attorney general investigating his own president, and there's an election going on. I think that made total sense. And lo and behold, we have an investigation where. There actually is a lot of bad evidence for for Joe Biden. That's criticism number one, which I think I was absolutely right in calling for a special counsel and urging you guys not to, not to prejudge the investigation. I think that history has now vindicated me with this report, which actually might show some bad stuff. Number one, criticism number two. You haven't talked about this shit. What? Uh, yeah, no, because I have. Yeah, give me five days and we'll go into election related. And if stuff, okay? Trump, if a similar special counsel had come out about Trump, you would be all over this like flies on poop. I wouldn't you? Don't think so. No, <laughs> I think the past like whole like two weeks has just been like it's basically been covering some drama stuff on stream and then like doing Israel Palestine shit. That's like and then the Ohio canvassing stuff. You're telling me you wouldn't have dedicated an hour to read the executive summary? Uh, maybe it depends on what would have come out, maybe. But I mean, I think we talked a little bit about like the Biden stuff, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't gone deep into it now. So, so you, out of all this time, you've had hours to talk about gesticle stream and all the stuff with your, you know, the personal stuff, the uh-huh. hours and hours and hours of Israel Palestine coverage, which I respect that you're doing it for your debate, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You couldn't find an hour to read the executive summary of the special counsel report into the sitting president for crimes. Well, my, there were no charges recommended, were there? So you're just going to rely on the ultimate disposition. So isn't Rob Moore right on that? That I would, that I would, if you're there were. You're not questioning what her is saying. You're just accepting whatever the DOJ puts out there without reading the underlying merits, even the executive summer, which is 20 pages. I mean, I also didn't dive ultra deeply into the, uh, into the Greg Abbott, Texas border shit either, even though that could have been like potentially you like. You had a couple videos on it. Yeah. We, I think we talked about it for a few hours. Yeah, for sure. But like, that was it. Like I could have theoretically spent like days digging into that as well. 
You could have, but like what I'm saying is it's been dead silence from a lot of Democratic streamers. Okay, I won't go talk to them. <laughs> I mean, what do you want well, me to say? You're one of them. You're one of them. Right now, I'm an Israel-Palestine streamer, okay? No, 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 no. I think this is a little bit shifty. I think if this were Donald Trump, I, I do think that you would be reading it. And I think that your intuition is there might be some bad stuff for Uncle Joe. And, but, it, you know, ultimately doesn't recommend charges. And so why bother? Well, my, hold on. My, the reason why I would say that that special counsel report absolutely didn't vindicate you is because one, these same things could have come up in an ordinary course of investigations in which we have no reason to believe that they wouldn't. Number one, um, the special counsel thing, by the way, plays into the narrative that the DOJ is essentially compromised by the deep state Democrats. Okay. Number one. And that number two, the most damning, th I don't know if Republicans even know the most damning things that came out of that report. Pretty sure what they fixate on are the Twitter headlines about Biden's memory, which also, by the way, wouldn't have probably ever been published. Um, How but do you know what's relevant in there because you haven't read it? I, 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 mean, I, I said I haven't gone over it on stream. Um, I, <laughs> I read a bit of it like uh, or, or when I was traveling, I think from Ohio might have been when it got released or whatever. Um, no, but I haven't mm -hmm. gone over all of it. But my understanding is the, the biggest things that came out of that were um, I think when Joe Biden was having a ghostwriter or somebody write for one of his autobiographies, I think it came out that he was sharing information with them that I think he knew was classified or shouldn't have been shared with them for part of them writing his memoirs. Um, I think that was the biggest part of potentially criminal behavior. Um, and then the second part, which is what everybody fixated on, were things related to his memory that made the Twitter headlines that like, oh, he didn't know what year his son died or uh, he seemed to have memory lapses relating to big events that he shouldn't or whatever. Okay. Well, if are, there, are there other big parts that I was missing from that or? I think that there, I think you need to engage with a lot of like the underlying what was found where, because there was a lot of classified information found in Biden's house and the actual charges, which seemed to suggest that he knew a lot of it was classified. For the um, stuff related to his biographer writer, I was aware of that. Um, there might've been other stuff too, yeah, sure. I mean, he's on a phone, I mean, take the, I have answers to all this, but I just wanna make sure, I'm gonna play the conservative again. Mm -hmm. We have a phone call with his ghostwriter where he says, oh yeah, all the classified stuff is downstairs. Yeah, correct, I remember that if quote. If that were Donald Trump, you would say that is damning proof. In fact, you were making fun of Donald Trump months ago when he was on the call saying, this is classified, look at this, this is Millie, and you were clowning on him. Yeah, but this is in response to Republicans who are deny either one, denying this ever happened, or two, making the most insane excuses for him ever. I haven't ventured an opinion. I haven't ventured a strong opinion in yet on the on the Biden classified document stuff. There might be legitimate stuff. And why stuff. haven't you ventured a, a strong opinion on it? Because it's not an, I, I don't have time to read about because every you, single yeah, thing happening at Biden. all points in time. What do you mean? I don't think Listen, I've covered much Trump-related <laughs> stuff over the past like two weeks either. The hell you haven't. The hell you haven't. You've spent some time going over Trump's indictments. I spent time spent going over stuff related. Hold on. I spent streams over it for for Glenn for my Glenn Greenwald debate and for my Alex Jones Glenn Greenwald debate for specific debates that I had coming okay. up for it. Yeah, that's your excuse. Is you had specific debates lined up for Trump stuff, but not for Biden stuff. But nobody's wanted to debate me on Biden stuff. What do you mean? If somebody wanted to come out and debate that like Biden is a perfect president, or Biden do what he didn't do anything wrong to particular thing, then yeah, I would probably do research on that. Okay. But wait, hold on. What do you mean? Your excuse is that debates that are highly publicized with internationally known figures are the ones that you're preparing for, but you're not also reading other information not related That's to it. Like, point. what do you mean? Of hey, course, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna concede. That's Fuck a good you. point. Okay. You have an incentive there. Um, at a certain point, different point, when you don't have a debate coming up, I would love to talk to you about the her report and why I think that they're very distinguishable from even on the classified stuff from what's going on with Trump. Sure, on the first or second, we can try to all right. when I'm done with it. Much love. Have you, fun, buddy. all right? Yeah, be bye careful. Bye. Wait. What? Are you going to be in town on the 29th? Maybe. I might I might be going with family somewhere, but just Fuck you, loser. message okay. me. All right, because I'll be there. Yeah. Love you. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Do you think that this picture is real, guys? Okay, we're reading stuff. Let me get through the...